when your moment comes, the, there is no time for hesitation. Absolutely. Question of whether the ball is broken or not. Neil Santos, the 2003, uh, sorry, 2013 singles champion. Now, some would argue he's the third option on Texas Wesleyan's team. <laughs> Maybe fourth. Yeah, we talk about how much the level of play in college table tennis has really risen in the last few years. And, and that is as good of an example as you can get. because it's not a situation where Emil has become the third or fourth player because his level of play has decreased. He's uh, all of a sudden found himself in a situation with even better training partners. Exactly. So he's, uh, and having had the opportunity to watch his play, he's improved, and yet still <laughs> is that number three player. You know, as good as it is right now, the momentum of college table tennis is going up and up and up. I can't wait to see what it's like in five, ten years. I'm thrilled. And someday, who knows? I, there's no reason NCTTA couldn't become a part of NCAA and be really a, a Division I sport. Absolutely. We see Emil taking first blood in this match. Hong Zhang will certainly look to be the aggressor here. He plays a very aggressive style. Emil more of a balanced player. <laughs> balanced in his play, but not in his emotions. He'll be fiery and, and definitely loud on the court. Absolutely. As we see a big point one for Bruno. On court two over there, that's the cheer you hear in the background. 5-4 on the changeover, could not be closer. Will we see Dusum the fifth? That's my favorite, <laughs> as we know. Emil right there, almost as loud as the rest of the entire crowd cheering on the other match. <laughs> Two, three. And this is only the beginning. Wait till the third, fourth, fifth game. Shut and there you hear it louder and louder. The stakes are high. Oh, goodness gracious. It is absolutely worth it right now to have both windows open here. The match on table two is out of control. Wow. wow. That's an international caliber block. You'll see on the replay how calm, collected, and controlled he stays. Places the ball really perfectly. Tong Zhang was trying to go for that right elbow, but not getting it in tight enough. And we're knotted up at six apiece on ta table two. Not quite enough wingspan for Tong. As Emil spins the ball past him. You can hear the celebrations of the Texas players cheering on their teammates. Things are really heating up over there. Uh, really fun to see people who want their teammates to win. Oh, Ooh. glances off the edge. But that team aspect of the sport really is. Uh, See the edge here. Oh, as close as it gets. 
Just by the skin of your chinny chin chin. Yeah, that's what fellow commentator Barney Reed likes to call perfect placement. <laughs> Barney will tell you those shots of his are deliberate. <laughs> we know better. I, you know what I say to him? Hey, do it again. <laughs> he probably would. That's that aggression we were talking about from Tong Jong. That forehand was going fast. And notice how he placed that into the body of Emil. Emil is standing, as you see, far on that backhand side of the table, tempting Tong to go down the line to his forehand, but Tong powers it into Emil's body. Still extremely tight over there on table two. Bruno is serving at 8-7. As we see two point leads on both tables. Tong from Mississippi up two on table one and Bruno up two from Texas on table two. Both players here on table one need to be 100% focused on their own match, unlike us. <laughs> Especially if you're Tong Zong, it can be very difficult to stay on your table when you're seeing your teammate now down three match points and calling a timeout. Tong will want to be as focused as he can here and try to close out this first game. There's that fiery nature of Emil coming out. Tong will be kicking himself for not making that forehand. He had a look at that ball, just not quite able to execute. And now Emil nosing out to 9-8 at the latter stages of this game. It's three straight for Emil as he comes back from the 8-6 deficit. as Bruno takes the match on table two, 11-7 in the fifth. Very tight matches being played so far. Game point to Emil. Tong is gonna try to hold his serve here to make it to Deuce. And again, that's the powerful cross-court forehand shot. You'll see it right here from the backhand corner. It's important to notice, though, it isn't just a, a one-and-done shot. The Emil knows that there's a very good chance that ball is coming back, and it's ready, light on his feet, starting already to shuffle back to the middle of the table. And you know, that's an important point to make for our viewers back home. When you're moving out to the left, even if you think you hit a winner, always come back expecting the ball. That's how you get to the higher levels of the game. Yeah, you should never, never, never expect a point to end. <laughs> yeah, that's the biggest mistake you can make. Something tells me that none of the players here are going to be doing that anytime soon. I, I wouldn't say so. <laughs> Not with the championships on the line. But it's interesting. There are so many opportunities to make mistakes in table tennis. Well, it's because the game has such thin margins. Mm -hmm. Any little millimeter angle difference, height difference, ball spinning at a different rotation 
can send the ball feet out. And when you have a nine by five table, <laughs> it mean it makes all the difference. Yeah, and all all the factors these players have to deal with the the racket angle, their elbow position, and the position of every joint on their body. Absolutely, is all used centered on your ground through your feet uh, in order to push forward and, and use that body like a web. A little, a little bit of a mistake, and your ball is not going on that 9x5 table. Mm -mm. Question now is how is Tong going to regroup here? He needs to make an adjustment for sure. showing some great defense on that point to go along with his offense. Total yes. stick save here. I notice his body stays balanced. Three, A little hop as he <laughs> extends that arm, barely getting to the ball. You have to have reflexes like a cat to pull that off. And recognize how on those blocks, like that shot, the players aren't just wildly throwing a paddle out there. They're trying to move early, set their paddle, and, and hold that position, letting the ball bounce off. The angle has to be perfect in order to make that shot. The angle, the timing, the height off the table, <laughs> everything needs to be perfect. Check out this backhand from Tong Zhang here. Oh, power. Showing us that he can hit well off of both wings. Wow, that's beautiful. Really picture-perfect play from Tong Zong. He's showing us he can win in more ways than one. Pushing that ball deep to that backhand corner, and then you play it wide an inch from that edge. And you can't spread the table better than that. And Emil not able to, to reach it. And you see Emil trying to do the same, not quite able to convert. That celebration picked up by the net cam. Tong Zhang moving up to a 7-2 lead here, and it is critical that he gets this game. Ooh, Emil benefiting from a lucky net court there. But you got to believe that on table two right now, Feng Zhe is going to be able to lock this one down him being a former Chinese national team member. I don't think it's too much of a stretch to say that Feng Zhe is the best player in this tournament. placement again. You just see uh -huh. it just dribble off the edge there. Very frustrating for Tong Zhang. You know, this one time uh, I was playing against Zaman Mola, a former Iranian national team member. He served one ball off the edge. Someone heckled him uh, from the crowd. Uh, said, do it again, and he did. 
Oh dear. And I'm not sure he could do that every time. <laughs> he definitely is able to, to place that ball within millimeters of that edge every time. Much like these players out here on the courts, every, every shot is so practiced, so rehearsed, so precise. And when we talk about the difficulty of this level of table tennis, uh, having to keep that level of precision while still uh, maintaining speed and spin and everything that factors into the points is spectacular. And while Tong Zhang is falling behind here, let's check out this point quickly. That's Emil showing you how much leg action goes into all these shots. Qingwei Sun is tied up at seven all on table two. You see those leg muscles ripple as he takes that backhand. Everything flexed to the extreme. Tang Zhang needs to hold serve here. He's halfway there. Nice heavy loop out to the forehand. Honestly, I'd like to see him be more aggressive, and I know he can be. Easier said than done against a player of Emil's caliber. <laughs> There's the second held his serve. Now we're at nine all. But now we have two serves coming at him from Emil. Here we see Tong Zhang hitting a nice backhand into the body. Not this one, right here. Emil not quite able to convert that down the line with the forehand. And that has seemed to be working. He wants that forehand shot, Emil. Not giving him it. Again, into the body, gets Tong the point. Body seems to be the play in this matchup so far. The extra movement that it takes to move your, your body around the ball instead of just to the ball makes it a very, very difficult shot. And we have Deuce at 10-10 as Ching Wei of Mississippi College takes the first over Feng Jia, 11 to seven. Could it be another five game match for Feng? <laughs> Very nice serve, heavy, heavy underspin. Emil not able to make the read there. Tong Zhang again with the body. We see the score level here at one game apiece. Look at those, 11-9, as we've said, a two-point game, 11-9, that's as close as a deuce game. To see the first two both decided by two points like this really sets the stage for an exciting match to come. Right there in the body, Emil not able to twist out of the way. And you know, I don't necessarily expect Ching Wei's son to win this match, even though he is up 1-0. We saw earlier Feng Zhe go down 2-0 against Emily Wong of Ohlone College and then decide on a whim, hey, I'm going to win this match, and he won the next three games very easily. I don't, I don't think that's out of the question here, even against Ching Wei's son, who is considerably better than Emily. That being said, I think it's very important for Ching Wei to look like he's about to win, and then have that support go out to Tong, who may see that, oh, his partner is up two sets to love. Maybe takes a little bit of pressure off of him, lets him play more freely, and then helps him beat Emil. Definitely, but at the same time, as Tong, or as Ching Wei, you can't be too distracted, like we said earlier, about uh, what's going on on that other court. 
there's so much to focus on in your match that if you're spending time uh, on the other table, you've missed a point. As a slight clip of the top of the net, Grant's tongue, the opener. And this is the start you'd like to see if you're Tong Zhang and Mississippi College fans. To love and with the serve. Beautiful touch there. Just barely skimming over the back end of that edge of that table. Difficult to hit a full swing when it's not coming back off the edge. Thunderous stomp on that serve. It's been mentioned a couple times throughout the tournament, but often that loud stomp, although it is sometimes used to disguise spin, it's often indicating how hard those players are impacting the ball on contact, putting everything behind their body into it. And we have here a fault call. at a critical juncture here at one game apiece. Oh! Neil shakes it off nicely though. Comes up with a very nice point here. Big backhand loops. And I'd like to see Emil playing from his back end three times in that rally uh, after it has been a problem for him taking that forehand at the body. With, with Tong trying to come into him so much, uh, that backhand is definitely a shot Emil's going to need as he appears frustrated over something to do with Tong's serve, it appears. Earlier after that point, motioning to the ref. Just fantastic reflexes there. And then to redirect it down the line as well, not easy to do. But he made it look easy. Can't quite reach it, hits the edge of his paddle down into the table. That's a feathery touch right there, just barely skimming over that net and then still having heavy underspin. That's why you saw it dive into the bottom of the court when Emil tried to get it back over. Emil really trying to pump himself up here. of really strong blocks from Emil from the backhand side. Although it looked there, he hesitated and wanted to, to use that forehand again when the ball's coming into his body. And on the flip side, Tong showing some great backhand loops. He can hit it hard from both sides. On table two, we see Feng Jia with game point up 10-7. We'll have three game points to stave off Ching Wei. Ooh, and a nice edge. Perfect placement. <laughs> That's why we're seeing so much of it at this high level. 
getting a meal back for an edge earlier. Two points away from grabbing a 2-1 lead. An uncharacteristically conservative point from both players. Waiting for their opponent to open, it almost appeared. Tong has to be very careful now. He does not want to let that lead slip away. And just like we just saw three game point opportunities for Feng, we'll now see three for Tong of Mississippi. Tricky reverse pendulum there. Had a ton of disguise on that service motion. Feng can't quite read it. But now he's got two serves to try to hold here. Take it 2-1. Oh. Good composure from Emil to hang on for so many lobs, but. You know what he does here, Tong. He totally fools Emil into thinking he's going back inside out. Not this shot. Not that one. See Emil waiting, waiting, trying to run around there. And then, yeah. Tong was looking out of the corner of his eye, seeing Emil trying to get around that to hit a big forehand. And that's the opportunity to go down the line. And uh, It was mentioned earlier uh, a few points ago how uh, we saw that uncharacteristic point where the players uh, had a few conservative pushes sure. or slow loops. Uh, but what the people at home watching Brian might not realize is uh, a situation like that often isn't uh, the players changing their strategy because they always do want to be the aggressor. But it, it more so is... Uh, uh, a chess move where they don't quite see that op opportunity for a kill shot or an opportunity for a, a more aggressive setup uh, and do have to play that conservative motion. Uh, perhaps that's something you might be able to elaborate on a little bit? Well, I just think it's important when you play to be very decisive. You know, if you're, if you're going to attack, then commit totally to the shot. And if you're going to push, then try to make it as heavy as possible. If you're caught in between, that's when you leave yourself open and you'll get punished, especially at this level. Tong Zhang needs to win this one for his team. Again, it's very unlikely that Feng Zhe is going to lose out on table two. Oh, oh, oh. Unreal play right there. Emil with some very blocking. Such smooth, smooth strokes from Tong. Huge forehand. He throws his whole body in the shot. Check it out. Neil throws his hands up. Can I catch a break? As we've seen a lot of nets and edges from both players in this. Huh. 
Wow. No way. How is that for a counter? I'll give some applause for that one. <laughs> yeah, I thought Emil had that one in the bag. But out of nowhere, Tong's incredibly fast <laughs> reflexes to, to put it back on the table, not just with a block, but with a loop. One of the fastest players in this tournament, Tong. We've got a timeout here. As we look over to table two, we can see that Ching Wei actually leads Feng 7-5 to five here in this third with the game score over there tied 1-1. One, one. This is an all-important juncture of the contest, Kevin. For those of you back home who don't, do not know the scoring format of these events, in college table tennis, one team is another team in four singles matches. If the singles matches get tied up at two all, then you go to a doubles match, and that doubles match decides the whole thing. Right now, Ching Wei Sun and Tong Zhang are trying to prevent even the doubles match from happening and taking this 3-1 in just the singles. Could you imagine the shock to the table tennis, college table tennis world <laughs> if Mississippi was able to sweep this year 3-1? Especially since they lost to Texas Wesleyan earlier in the Southern Regional event. And for Ching Wei Sun to beat Feng Zhe to clinch it, that would be that would be quite something. We're getting smiles from Cheng Li as he coaches Tang Zhang in front of us. He's liking where his team is at. Definitely. He, we know he hopes they can wrap up this Mississippi co-ed team title in his final year of play at the school. And that might be some extra incentive for him to come back next year and help coach defend that title one more time. Emil with a loud vamos. He's trying his best to stick around. Ooh, I'm getting chills down my spine, Kevin. He reminds me of Rafa Nadal. Vamos. The hairs of my arm are standing up. <laughs> and we have game point on table two, 10-8. Jingwei leads. Oh! <laughs> and I squeal in the middle of the point on table <laughs> one. But on table two, Ching Wei has just taken the third game to go up 2 1 over Feng Sha. I can see hands on faces covering their mouth in the crowd. Pull on! And with an, with Even if he loses. Ching Wei Sun winning that game might do a world of good for Tong Zhang, gonna give him a time. And he'll try his best to close this out. Three, three and four, excuse me. And with an 8 3 lead, he looks poised to do so. It would take quite a comeback from Emil from this deficit. Here's Tong Zhang going for a crazy aggressive shot, but he makes them all the time. So only crazy for people like you and me, Kevin. <laughs> oh. A one point closer. Zhang inching his way closer. Whoa! That lunge to cover 20 feet in a, a matter of the time it takes that ball to travel the nine feet of the table. Look at that! Neil trying his best to 
bring this to a fifth. Can't quite lift that over the net. And then we see that into the body shot played by Emil this time. That's something we haven't really seen yet. Cheng Li calling a timeout. Emil able to charge back from a sizable deficit. We talked about earlier in the day uh, in the Berkeley women's, uh, I believe, semifinal match. Uh, their failure to, to call a timeout that ended up actually resulting in the loss of the game for them. Uh, they were up 5-3. Their opponent called that timeout and proceeded to win the next eight points. Or so, sorry, seven points. And ended up closing out that game 11-6. Berkeley, why didn't their coach call a timeout? Here we see the much more experienced players, uh, Cheng Li and Tong Zong, opting for that timeout to talk things over and not, not blow a match. Absolutely, it's so important to try to disrupt the momentum, especially when you're playing a player like Emil Santos who's just won a bunch of points in a row. Good on Tong to get to a lead large enough to not just have those few points won by Emil and, and be still close, tied, or only down one or two, but still be up two. That's a good situation for him to be in. And we can see Texas's play player, Bruno, pacing nervously, nervously in front of us. Just a reminder, it would be a sizable upset if Tong Zhang is able to get past Emil Santos here. game back to nine all Tong Zhang has to be kicking himself for not being able to close out that all-important fourth game here nine, nine. smart to take your time go to the towel try to think hard about what you're gonna do here Oh. oh, perhaps a little too conservative on that second shot after the netball. I'll tell you what, he made a great recovery here see it. off of this Net, netball. That dive, but right right there, that's the one too He should have killed conservative. it. Yeah, to his backhand. We've seen him have powerful shots away from the table like that. Hesitated just a little bit, and now game. Oh, yes. But Tong says no. Look at that block. Stays right up on the table. I think there's a hole in Emil's paddle. <laughs> it went as close as it could have gone to the touching that. Deuce again. Such competitive level of play. Oh! oh Emil can only nod his head saying, great shot, man. Look at this. Oh, untouchable. Perfect placement, incredible reaction speed, and it gets him a match point here. Oh. As the score gets tied up with Deuce, you have to imagine from Ching Wei's perspective on table two, what wonders it could do for him in his match with Fung it, if he was able to look over and see his Mississippi teammate won. Uh, and no, either way we're going to doubles. Absolutely. Deuce. 
too alive. Uh -huh. Or to perhaps speak a little more accurately, if I lose, we go to doubles. If I win, we can win straight out. Exactly. And perhaps motivate him, give it his all in the fifth game if he can't close out the fourth. But Feng up 10-7 now on table two. Oh. And he's done it. Hong Zhang takes down Emil Santos. 13-11 in the fourth. Our largest margin in their match was three points. Mississippi College now in a, com I don't know, not a commanding lead, but a lead nonetheless. God, a very good position to be in. If I was Mississippi, I would be thrilled to be where they are now. And we just see Ching Wei win his second point in a row after being down 10-7. Score now sits at 9-10 in favor of Feng Xia. Uh, 